I'm the calculus professor and today I'll be talking to you about integration by parts. In problem number 37, I'd like to evaluate the integral from 1 half to root 3 over 2 of sine inverse of y dy. All right, uh, I am going to use integration by parts on this guy. Uh, and if I'm going to use integration by parts, I have u and I have dv. And the question is, for sine inverse of y, what can I do with that guy? Do I know that guy's derivative or do I know it's antiderivative? And the answer is I know the derivative of sine inverse of y. If I knew the antiderivative of sine inverse of y, I suppose I should just take it and be done. Right? So if I knew the antiderivative, this would be a very easy problem. I don't, so I'm going to have to use its derivative to get the job done. That means that dv is everything else. In this case, everything else is just dy. Uh, the derivative du of sine inverse of y is 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. Oh, sorry, not x squared, y squared because we're in y here, dy. And v, the antiderivative of 1, is just y. OK, so now let's rewrite this integral using uh, these u, dv, du, and v. So I'll rewrite right over here. This is equal to u times v. So that's y times sine inverse of y. So y sine inverse of y. And remember, now that's evaluated from a half to root 3 over 2 minus the integral of v times du. So I put that y up on top, and I get y over square root of 1 minus y squared dy and that's evaluated from a half to root 3 over 2. Okay, so I can finish this thing off. I need to plug some things in here, but I need to take an antiderivative of y over the square root of 1 minus y squared, but that's a u substitution. So if I want to use a u substitution on this guy, I want to let u be 1 minus y squared, so du would be negative 2y dy. I have a negative here already. I don't have a 2. Uh, so what I could do is I could make this a minus 2, which would mean that this would have to be a plus 1 half to cancel it out. Does that work? If I bring the 1 half inside, I get minus y, which is perfect. And so everything's ready for a substitution. So let's do this. I'll rewrite. This is y sine inverse of y evaluated from a half to root 3 over 2 <coughs> plus 1 half integral of the whole top is du and the bottom is the square root of u. Now I can change my limits of integration. If y is a half, then u is 1 minus a half squared, or 1 minus 1 fourth. 1 minus 1 fourth is 3 fourths, so this is 3 fourths. And then if I plug in square root 3 over 2, I get 1 minus square root 3 over 2 squared, which is 3 over 4. 1 minus 3 fourths is 1 fourth, so this is 1 fourth. Okay, now we need to take an antiderivative, and we get y sine inverse y evaluated from 1 half to root 3 over 2 <coughs> plus 1 half. The antiderivative of u to the negative 1 half is u to the 1 half times 2. So this is going to be u to the 1 half times 2 evaluated from 3 fourths to 1 fourth. And now we're ready to start plugging things in. Let's do it. 
If I plug in root 3 over 2, I get root 3 over 2 times sine inverse of root 3 over 2. In other words, sine of what angle gives me root 3 over 2? And the answer is pi over 3 minus plug in 1 half and I get 1 half times sine inverse of 1 half. In other words, sine of what angle gives me a half? And that would be pi over 6. Okay, so that piece is done. Plus, uh, notice I have a 2 on top, a 2 on bottom, those can cancel. So I get plus, plug in the square root of 1 fourth is 1 half, and the square root of 3 fourths is, I need to subtract this, is the square root of 3 over 2. All right, so uh, what is the final answer here? I could simplify this a little bit, uh, not a lot, is I get the square root of 3 pi over 6 minus pi over 12 plus 1 half minus root 3 over 2. Now, if I wanted to, I could combine some of these things into one fraction. I could get a common denominator of 12. Maybe we could make this look a little prettier, but at the end of the day, this is my final answer.